in this session we will be going to discuss the design of the feedback controller and the design will be based on our answer to three different questions or rather two different questions. First, what the controller we should select for the given duty and second, what will be the controller's parameters. So, our topic here is the design of feedback controllers. So, first question we will answer what is the best controller for a given duty. Right. What is the best controller for a given duty? And second, what are the best controller parameters? So, these two questions we have to answer and that will lead you to the design of this feedback controller. So, you see that to answer this question we have already discussed that if uh, it is a pure capacitive system or a capacitive resistive system even we can use P controller right. So, the pressure and level are two issues or two control uh, problem which are nearly pure capacitive either pure capacitive or it has got a slight resistance right. So, the point is if it is a pure capacitive system we know that in servo mode previously we have discussed that in servo mode there will be no offset right whereas in regulator mode for pure capacitive system we have or we can reduce the offset to 0 if uh, we set a bit high value of this proportional constant. So, for pure capacitive or a capacitive resistive system we can safely use P controller will produce no offset. Right, and the examples are pressure control and level control. Second, for any other, we can use this PI control. However, the point is the overall dynamics of as we have seen in understanding the feedback dynamics, the overall dynamics is, is dependent on the dynamics of the process and the dynamics of the control. If the process is sluggish, we should not use PI controller because the controller itself is also sluggish. But if the process is generally fast, then we can definitely go for PI controller, right. So, PI mode should be used for non capacitive
but inherently fast processes why should be it should be non capacitive because for non capacitive p controller is sufficient so pi mode of control we should use if the process is non capacitive but it is inherently fast the example is flow control why it must be inherently fast because the controller that is pi is a sluggish controller right so flow control or flow process they are inherently fast process once you close or open the valve immediately we see a change in the flow rate but not it is not the case in temperature and composition control right so just like whenever you are thinking of controlling the composition of a distillate in a binary distillation column what we do we change the reflux ratio so immediately we don't see any change in the distillate composition the distillate composition will change after certain characteristic a threshold time right any change any tangible change will be seen after a certain time maybe for a standard industrial column the time may be 5 minutes right who knows it may be 5 minutes so over that 5 minutes even if we have changed the reflux there is practically no change in this distillate composition so comp why because the composition control is inherently a sluggish process so with that if we attach a sluggish controller the overall process control the dynamics will be extremely slow and that is not feasible to be implemented in any industrial process right so there we have to go for a fast controller but at the same time it is non capacitive process composition and temperature control they are non capacitive process mostly there are resistances there may be some combined resistances it may be a multi capacity etc just just like this selection column the individual tray may be considered as a single capacity that is a fast order system and they are connected if we just go for rigorous modeling of a distillation column we can see which is beyond our scope of course uh, we can see that it's behaving as a multi capacity system so for multi capacity multi capacity it may be n th order system right so for multi capacity the process itself is very sluggish so as the process is sluggish and you are attaching a sluggish controller so overall dynamics is becoming uh, not being feasible for industrial application so we have to use a fast controller but at the same time we cannot use p control only because it will not give you non zero offset so you have to go for pi and we can increase the rate of action or the speed of action of this controller by attaching the derivative mode because derivative mode we see or we know that it is an anticipatory mode of control by taking the derivative of the present error it can foresee what will be the trend of this error in future right so <clears throat> from this perspective we will choose pid controller for sluggish and non capacitive processes right this derivative mode actually improves the speed of controller's action so it is a non capacitive process and it must be sluggish where we should use this pid controller so example is of course temperature control and composition control so you see that is about the choice of the controller which is entirely based on the condition of 
zero offset sluggishness of the process and the standard speed or the standard qualitative understanding regarding the speed of this controller section. So, based on that we will select P or either P or PI or PID. So, you have to note that actually in a process industry we have to basically control any of this or all of this or some of this uh, variables which includes pressure, level, flow, temperature and composition right. So, that actually covers the entire set of variables which are controllable and to be controlled in a chemical process industry. So, that is all about the controller selection. Next, what is more important, what are the best controller parameters? Just like for a proportional controller, what should be the Kc value or a for a PID controller, what should be the Kc tau i or tau d value? That are to be decided. So, how to decide that? Here, we must fix, this is based on and this, this fixing the values of the parameter, they are called controller tuning, right. Just we tune the radio to adjust the gap between the two plates where this broadcasting wave after some modification will form a standing wave between this and the channel is audible. So, from the radio tuning we have picked up the term of the controller's parameter tuning, right. So, this is based on design criteria, right. So, what are the design criteria? Definitely, we have to think that okay, no offset is a design criteria and it is a mandatory design criteria. But that is basically a criterion, criterion we fix on the steady state value of error that is offset, okay. And we say that there must not be any offset at steady state, but there must be certain dynamic perspective as well, right. Like dynamically we should uh, focus on how fast the steady state value is achieved and uh, it may happen for under damp system, overall under damp system and we have seen that when we attach a controller to a first order process, it becomes a second order process and it may be over damped, under damped or critically damped. Now, in under damped processes, the final value is being reached within a quite so small interval of time, but the response is not staying there, it is overshooting that desired final value, right. And then it will be following a decay and finally settling down at the characteristic time called the response time of a second order process. So, that is typically how fast it is achieving if we say that how fast it is achieving the final value, right. So, that may be uh, unsteady state criteria. So, primarily the design criteria we should classify as steady state criteria and this is a criteria based on dynamic response, right. So, steady state criteria is only a single one. What is that? No offset. That is no steady state error. Now, the criteria based on dynamic response. So, this, this we will not consider separately because already we have used this idea for the controller selection. So, we will majorly focus on the criteria based on dynamic response. So, what are they? Again, these are classified into two. Why? Because, so dynamic response based criteria we can further classify into two broad groups. One, based on some discrete 
point of the overall dynamic profile and the other is based on the whole dynamic profile. So see just we were talking about that uh, minimum response time right. So when we are talking about the minimum response time we are not focusing over the entire dynamic profile but we are looking at a, some specific point where the response permanently enters the part plus minus 5 percent band of the final value that is specifically the response time or it may be the minimum rise time right or it may be the minimum overshoot. So, they all belong to this first category where we are focusing in order to fix the criteria we are focusing on some specific points right. So, first we will discuss this category and after that we will go for the criteria which are based on the entire dynamic response profile. Hello, Afsir. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Ye toh ek bari ka chal gaya. Na, tu tu gayi. Shambhu. Hello, hello. So, we will focus on the dynamic response criteria which are based on some specific points of the entire profile. So, the topic is dynamic response based criteria focusing on some discrete points, points of the profile, right. Like, uh, let us say this is the desired value and we have two different profiles. Say this is profile A and this is profile B and it is we are using let us say it is a proportional controller and this we have got for a KC value equal to 100 and B we have got for a KC value of 1.5. Hmm. So, we can see the profile A is reaching the final value much more earlier than profile B. However, it is not staying there, it is moving up. 
and again it oscillates and let's say this is the plus minus 5% band right and uh, let's think the profile is like this it slightly overshoots this plus minus 5% band this is plus minus 5% band across the final value right so if I choose first minimum rise time that's a typical criteria which belongs to this category if we choose minimum rise time selection is kc equal to 100 right that is the type a of response if i choose minimum overshoot that is selection is kc equal to 1 if i choose minimum response time see here the response time or actually the specific definition of the response time is not valid for under damp a uh, over damped response but still it's entering this at much earlier right it's entering much earlier here and it's not moving uh, or not deviating further it's finally approaching to this final value so here this is the response time t response for b whereas this is the response time for a right so the minimum response time based criteria if we fix for controller selection then evidently my choice will be b so here the selection is kc equal to 1 right so minimum rise time minimum overshoot minimum response time these are the standard criteria which belongs to the dynamic response based criteria focusing on some discrete points the most popular one criterion of this group is one quarter decay ratio right this is definitely a thumb rule all are thumb rule most commonly this is the most commonly used criterion of the specific group right so one quarter decay ratio means what the decay ratio is setting we set it to be equal to 1 by 4 okay now you see let us let us have an example hmm. we have example of controller tuning based on one quarter decay ratio so let's it is be a p controller for which the gc equal to kc and the process gp is a second order process 1 divided by s square plus 3s plus 1 this is over damped and negligible dynamics of the measuring device and the final control element that is for simplification and it is operating in servo mode. So y prime bar will be equal to gc gf gp divided by 1 plus gc gf gp gm into ysp prime bar so gc equal to kc gf equal to 1 
gp is equal to s square plus 3s plus 1 divided by 1 plus kc into 1 divided by s square plus 3s plus 1 into ysp prime 1 and this is 1 this is 1 gm and gf they are equal to 1. So, finally, uh, we get this uh, kc divided by s square plus 3s plus 1 plus kc right into ysp prime 1. So, if we divide the entire numerator and denominator by 1 plus kc, so we get uh, this one. So, 1 divided by 1 plus kc s square 3 divided by 1 plus kc s plus 1. So, this is naturally the gain, this is the square of the natural period and this is 2 into tau into zeta, right. So, from here we have the parameters, let us say this is tau prime square, this is 2 tau prime zeta prime and this is equal to the <coughs> kp prime, right. So, tau prime as we can calculate is 1 divided by under root of 1 plus kc and naturally this zeta prime is equal to finally it will be also 1 divided by under root 1 plus kc. So, decay ratio as you all know it is square of the overshoot and it will be equal to exponential of minus 2 pi zeta prime here divided by under root of 1 minus zeta square. So, it is exponential of 2 pi zeta prime divided by under root of 1 minus zeta prime square, <coughs> right. So, zeta prime is a function of Kc and that decay ratio we set equal to 1 by 4 and from there we can solve this Kc prime is equal to 2 pi by log 4, right. But the point is if instead of using a P controller, now if I set a Pi, right. If I am using a PI, maybe the process is non capacitive 1 and we have chosen PI. So, for PI, there are two parameters, two controller parameter Kc and tau i. So, I will be getting in terms of decay ratio. So, you can understand that if I substitute it, finally, there will be a denominator where we will have a second order type function. The numerator will be a function of S and which is the lead element, denominator is the lag element and basically the denominator will determine what will be the decay ratio. So, we can by using the same formula we can calculate the decay ratio and now it will be this decay ratio which is we are setting equal to 1 by 4 must be a function of Kc and tau i, right. So, we have two, two parameters or two variables and we are having only one equation. So, you have to choose another criteria, right. It may be the minimum rise time or minimum overshoot or minimum response time or whatever it is. So, that depends on my objective, how we want to control and what should be my desired uh, trend of this dynamic profile. Now, it may happen that if we randomly choose two criteria from this list, right, it may be giving you contradictory results. So, that depends on the experience of the controller designer. You will set for, you will look into the process, select the controller and accordingly uh, he will do some calculations based on the dynamic response criteria, right. So, the selection of that specific criteria, the group of criteria, it is empirical that we have to understand, right. Design in general is empirical. Okay. Somewhere we have to use thumb rules, somewhere we have to use the values which are uh, basically we have obtained from pilot plant analysis and all. So, similarly here we have to use 
another criteria, but we must be wise in choosing that specific criteria and there is no hard and fast rule that if such and such happens or process has got such and such characteristics, then we will choose this two or otherwise this two, right? No, there is no such uh, standard guidelines. That is entirely based on designer's experience and wisdom. He will choose the criteria and based on that or set of criteria based on that he will determine the best suited controller parameter and additionally we must ensure stability right just because the stability is the first criteria or the stability is the first notion to be implemented in designing any feedback controller so once that is guaranteed right we will go for finding the optimum controllers value but definitely uh, a priori it is not possible to determine about the stability so we choose criteria that is based on our experience we will decide about the values of KC and tau i and then we will ensure uh, the stability upon using this routh Harvis criteria right of stability maybe or maybe the another type of uh, analysis which is called the root locus that I have not covered right because we had no such questions from root locus in gate syllabus. So <clears throat> the thing is uh, here this entire strategy of design based on this dynamic response criteria is empirical. So next we will go for the other category the dynamic response criteria based on based on the entire profile. Right. So here first we have to understand the notion of error. You see if this is the y prime sp right the desired this is t this is y and let us say my response is something like this. So at each and every point unless it settles down to that final value we have an error. So, we define local error epsilon t as y s p prime minus y prime right in time domain. Now, if I simply integrate that error, it may happen that overall value is very close to 0 because if the response is under damped specifically. <coughs> here we have a negative uh, this positive error over this side the error is negative again here it is positive on this side it is negative so positive and negative there is every chance that it will cancel out specifically this is the case for under damp response. So we are going to introduce a general trend or so sorry general criteria. So we can do what we can introduce a quantity which is the integral of the square of the error or integral of the absolute value of the error. So we have we propose three different types of error integral. Right. So what are they? Just have mentioned that we can go for square of the error, we can go for absolute value of the error or simultaneously we can also go or not simultaneously additionally we can also go for this time weighted absolute error. So let us first define those quantities <coughs> ISE first that is integral of square error 
right and it's defined as 0 to infinity epsilon square dt. Second, integral of absolute error zero to infinity mod of epsilon t dt. Third, I t a e integral of time weighted absolute error. Zero to infinity t epsilon t dt right so when we are going to use iac criteria or iac based criteria or iae based criteria or itae based criteria that we have to understand so and the criteria is what the criteria may be minimum here this is the set of controllers parameter IAC or minimum IAE or minimum ITAE right here x you see this vector x is Kc for P controller, it is Kc tau i for Pi controller and Kc tau i tau d for Pid controller. So, which one we should choose? Whether it is minimum IAC or minimum IAE or minimum ITA. So, guideline. If the system is prone to large errors, we must choose IAC or rather minimum IAC criterion. If we have small errors, definitely if we square the small error, it will be further getting reduced so we have to increase the weightage so we choose to integrate the absolute error so if we have small errors we must go for minimum ia criteria third if we have very small but persistent error that is existing over a long stretch of time we should choose minimum ITAE criteria right so three are the standard guideline for choosing uh, whether it will be the minimum IAC or minimum IAE or minimum ITA. So, let us have a uh, example, but here this <coughs> mathematics definitely it is the algebra is tedious and frequently we have to use the numerical solution. So, we'll not solve it fully, but we will try to demonstrate that what should be the procedure. Right. So, what is that? 
let's say GC it's a peak of PI controller 1 plus 1 by tau is right GF equal to 1 is equal to GM GP is equal to 20 by s plus 1 a fast order process and GD equal to 1 divided by s plus 1 right. Uh, Let us say it is the servo mode of control. So, we are tuning it for it. So, y prime bar is equal to this uh, GC, GM, GP divided by 1 plus GC, GM, GP, GF, uh, GF, YSP prime bar. So, G C is K C into 1 divided by tau I S into this 1 into 20 divided by S plus 1 denominator is 1 divided by K C 1 plus 1 by tau I S into 1 into 20 by S plus 1 into 1 into Y S P prime 1. So, what we will have finally? There will be tau i s plus 1 in the numerator and denominator will be tau square s square plus 2 tau zeta s plus 1 into y s p prime bar, where this tau is under root of tau y by 20 k c. If we solve this algebra and zeta is equal to half under root tau y by 20 k c into 1 plus 20 k c whatever it is. So, what is the most important and tedious? So, what is the most tedious about this specific group of criteria that we have to go for time inverse right. Definitely in the previous cases also we have to go for time inverse, but uh, as we were looking for the specific discrete point value of the response or a specific parameter like overshoot or response time or this rise time, just standard equations available. But here we do not have any, right. Here we have to go for direct, directly the this uh, time inverse. So, let y s p prime bar equal to 1 by s, it is a unit step change. So, if I just substitute it and go for this for zeta less than 1, let us say zeta less than 1 for this specific uh, term, right. And it will give you an under damped response. And what is the response? This, this includes a lot of algebra to be done 1 plus e to the power minus zeta t by tau divided by 1 minus zeta square within bracket tau y by tau into sine of under root 1 minus zeta square t by tau minus sine 1 minus zeta square t by tau plus tan inverse of under root 1 minus zeta square by zeta square. So, it is a big formula what we have to solve for by going for lap going Laplace inverse right. So, I s e now would we call it 0 to infinity epsilon square d t and that is y s p prime minus y prime whole square d t right. So, y s p prime bar sorry y s p prime not bar y s p prime its desired value is 1 minus y prime which is given here 
that is squared and that is to be integrated, right? So, you see, what are unknowns? In this you can analytical expression, we have zeta, we have tau, we have tau y. So, zeta is what? Zeta is a function of tau i and kc, right? Tau is similarly another function of tau i and kc. So, overall y prime t is a function of tau i, kc and t. So, that if I substitute here, this y prime is a function of tau i, kc and t. This t is a variable, tau i and kc are two parameters. So, if I integrate it over time, so finally I will get Iac to be a function of two controllers parameter, right? And our criteria is what? Our criteria is minimum Iac, right? And what do we have to minimize? What are the optimization parameter? Tau i and kc. So, which is a function of tau i and kc. So, this is an unconstrained optimization problem. Right? For which the obvious is that the condition if the IAC is a continuous function and definitely it will be this vanishing partial derivatives with respect to tau i and with respect to kc. So, this is the criteria which is the condition for multivariable objective function. So, that is though, though definitely it is an analytical condition, numerically if we want to solve there are different algorithms existing, right, but that we will not go into details because numerical optimizations and all is beyond again the scope of undergrad. So, just, just from the analytical perspective as we have an analytical expression, definitely this integration is very, very complicated analytically, but numerically it is pretty fine. Hmm? So, the condition will be the partial derivative will be equal to 0 and from there we can solve for the optimum tau i and kc values. So, this is the second class of criteria we have solved. Right. Now, based on this uh, dynamic response criteria, there is a standard protocol for tuning the controller and that we are going to discuss which is based on open loop technique and it is referred as cohen cohen controller tuning technique. Right. So, all topic here. The last topic of this controller design based on uh, responses which are non-periodic, hmm. that is step change and pulse and something like that, but we are not considering the frequency based response So this uh, periodic input, just like a sine wave. So that will be discussed further in this frequency response analysis uh, and from there we have the another design criteria, we will discuss it and that is called the Ziegler-Nichols criteria. Okay. But here this technique of feedback controllers tuning is based on the strategy of open loop and the standard inputs are step input. So, Cohen Kuhn technique of controller tuning. So, let us consider a feedback uh, loop. So, this is Ysp prime, the block diagram basically we are considering here. So, we, are, we have a comparator plus here we will have the controller, the final control element, the process. final output and GM 
this is minus. Okay? So you see the point is in majority of the cases of process plant we do not know the transfer function of this part that is GM uh, sorry GP and GD are mostly unknown. Right. So, first task of the designer is to determine the transfer function of GP and GD and that is basically the core theme of this cohen cohen tuning technique. Right. So, <coughs> what was the strategy? So, they proposed that okay, we have to know GP and GD or specifically GP because GD will have the same transfer function but with a changed gain. So, what we do that we open the loop or open the connection between controller and the final control element and there artificially we will give a step input, a step input we will be giving here of step magnitude A. Hmm? From uh, this practical applications of different uh, process systems. Cohen couldn't recognize that the curve what we get from here right that is y m prime versus t that will give you the idea about what is the transfer function of g p ok and the, at the outlet or in the measuring device or from the measuring device we will get something which will be the reaction to the process a reaction of the process to this step input a pseudo input from the controller and this curve is known as process reaction curve right y m prime versus t what we intercept from here is the process reaction curve and y m prime bar divided by c prime bar is equal to what g f g p g m here we set d prime is equal to 0 the disturbance over the time period of experiment is held at its design value. So, this is referred as g p r c process reaction curve right. So, what is their novel proposition or unique proposition? As most of the systems or most of the processes are multi capacity. y m prime versus t must be a sigmoid type curve. The process reaction curve will be a sigmoid type because most of the chemical processes are multi capacity processes just like distillation column, absorption column, staged reactors and all right. So, for which the response y m prime t versus t say it will reach a final value of b and the curve is something like this a sigmoid type response. Hmm. So, from here from here we have to determine the transfer function. So, what was the suggestion of Cohen and Kuhn? A sigmoid type curve they have replaced as a response towards a step input of a first order system coupled with a dead time. Because we know that the sigmoid type curve is modeled 
as a response of a first order plus dead time system towards a step input right because this will be a curve like this so if i fit that or okay if if we demonstratively explain this it will be like this Okay, now they have approximated this GPRC as Kp into e to the power minus Tds divided by tau Ps plus 1. They have hypothesized that as it is a sigmoid, we can think it as a response of a fast order system coupled with a dead time towards any step input of step magnitude A. Right, so this is B and let us say this central region, it has got a slope S, right. If we draw a tangent to the central part of this rising section of the sigmoid, I will get a line. Tentatively, this will be the the step must this uh, first order response must merge with that okay and this is the dead time so from the diagram what we will do actually see we have got this response so what we will do we will draw a straight tangent to the mid portion of this and we'll consider that this is the first order response plus the dead time. So, when this tangent, where the tangent intersects from there, we will get this Td, right. And Kp is equal to B by A. And we know the time constant of a first order process is what? It is basically the time, it is basically the time of process completion if the process follows its initial rate of change. That is the typical time constant definition for a fast order process. So, we have shown it that this is exactly equal to tau d, oh sorry tau p, the time constant of this fast order process. And <coughs> the slope you see is S. So, the slope is equal to what? B divided by SP. B divided by this tau P that is equal to slope. So, tau P is equal to B divided by S. So, Kp, tau P and here Td can be determined. So, from graphical analysis, draw a tangent to the linear part of the sigmoid, sigmoid shaped curve, right. From the graphical analysis, we can calculate Kp, Td, and tau. So, once we know the three parameters which are definitely hypothetical because there is the multi capacity is not at all physically a fast order process coupled with the red time. So, it is hypothetical modeling right it is a modeling. So, from this model we have got the approximate transfer function of this gf, gp and gm right. So, once this is at hand Definitely now we know because GF and GM are very well documented, so we can calculate what is GP. Similarly, we can also get the value of GD provided we have the same transfer function but only with a changed gain.
hmm? and that is the case. So, what is the suggestion of Cohen Kuhn? Cohen Kuhn, finally, if we look at their proposition, we don't have to find separately this GP. So, what they propose that once they have we have the values of KP, tau P, and TD, they have suggested the tuned value of the controller parameter in terms of this, these three parameters, right, using one quarter de decay ratio and minimum offset. From the value values of KC or KP, tau P, sorry, tau P and TD, Cohen and Kuhn suggested the following optimum choices for controller parameters based on minimum offset and one quarter decay ratio. Right. So, what are the values? For P controller, they have suggested that okay, KC should be equal to KP into tau P by TD 1 plus td divided by 3 tau p right for pi they suggested that kc is equal to 1 by kp tau p by td 0 0.9 plus td divided by 12 tau p and tau i is equal to td 30 plus 3 td by tau p divided by 9 plus 20 td by tau p and finally for pid controller. So, you do not have to remember these values that is actually their outcome of the analysis based on this discrete point based dynamic criteria application like minimum offset and one quarter decay ratio because from here knowing the values of kp tau p and td we know GP, so they have picked up the value of GP considering maybe GMGF equal to 1 and from there they have proposed these parameter sets, okay. So, what we know that, uh, okay, let me, okay, let me write the PID also. So, PID, only I am writing the KC part. 1 divided by KP tau P by TD 4 by 3 plus TD divided by 4 tau P and tau I and tau D. So, that I am not writing it is obvious. So, what do we see that KC of PI is less than KC of P, right? and also less than KC of PID. Why? Because hmm, this is due to the fact that integral control mode makes the system more sensitive and thus the gain value needs to be more conservative, right? Sensitive means for a small change it may leading to controller saturation and hence instability. So, the tuned value of PI controller for KC, the proportional mode must be lower in case of PI controller or lowest in case of PI controller and it will be PI and PID we can have slightly higher value. PID is bit lower compared to this P, right. So, but because the, the derivative mode is to some extent stabilizing the overall response. So, that is all about the design of the controller, feedback controller based on open loop Cohen Cohen technique. We will discuss another tuning technique called Ziegler-Nichols based on this frequency response analysis. So, in the next session, 
we are going to start what I have uh, previously mentioned as frequency response analysis.